participation. Uh, we're not allowed to go to other stadiums to go and watch the games. Uh, there's only the, the team that must be there, the home and away team. And um, to, to prepare like that, you know, it's difficult, but it also puts everybody on the same level because none of the teams can get info from each other unless, like, for example, uh, Cape Moyo played uh, TS Sporting in the first game. So at least we could get some info from uh, Roger Desa. Um, he gave us a few tips, but obviously we didn't focus on it too much because sometimes the teams come to Cape Town because it's a away game. So now they totally change the way they play. So obviously the main focus was that we prepare um, how we want to play because we're at home. And obviously to make sure that our defensive structure is uh, in place. So if we are up for challenges that we can deal with any situation. So we obviously prepare the team like to for, for all the different scenarios. And um, fortunately now for us, like um, we were set up well, uh, started the game with a good tempo. Um, both teams had uh, one or two chances. Uh, I think our chances that we had in the first half was more clear than what they had. Um, the like I said, the quality, the tempo was good. Like we played good football. Yes, in sometimes in patches, but also it's you know it's the first game, so everybody's trying to find the feet. But uh, like I said, the combinations and tempo of the of the first half was good. So at halftime, obviously there was a little bit of wind. Also, we played against the wind uh, in the first half, not too bad. Um, so obviously at halftime, like uh, I, all I told them was that we're doing good, and all we need to do is like to be consistent. And I'm sure that we will get one or two chances and we'll be able to put it away and just make sure that we, our defensive structure is, stays the same and we make sure that we don't concede any goals because if you don't concede, we don't lose the game. So we already have one point. We just have to look the, for the other two points on the field. And um, we started the second half exactly the way we ended the, the, the first half with that same quality, the same tempo. Um, Good football also um, because, you know, we're trying to play also not only direct football or stuff like that. We're trying to vary it so, you know, we have different solutions and options like and stuff like that. And um, I think it was an attack from them. Uh, they had a shot at goal, deflected, easy catch for the keeper. Straight away, he put us on a counter-attack. Um, our left midfielder was uh, unmarked. He received the ball in in our half and he turned around and he saw the goalkeeper was off the line and he unleashed the shot straight from there. And the goalkeeper couldn't obviously backpedal and he couldn't get to the ball. So uh, straight uh, straight in, yeah. So that was that puts out put us one zero up. I think it was about 15, 15 minutes into the second half. And then about five to ten minutes later, we constantly put pressure. Uh, we had another couple of chances and then we uh, finally got the penalty uh, with a handball in the box. Uh, Gregory Roof uh, took the penalty and he's made it 2-0 uh, for us. And um, then uh, we were still, uh, we kept them on the back foot. We, I think we created another two, three chances after that. But then I don't know if it's a mentality thing where when you're 2-0 up and now you're getting a little bit of pressure and now you know, you're backstepping and we're retreating into our own uh, half and our own uh, final third and obviously now you inviting pressure uh, because now the team is coming they want to score but you're making it a bit easier for them because now we're backstepping and we uh, we going into our final third and defending from deep uh, but we managed I mean we our defensive structure was good so we managed to keep them out we defended well but then unfortunately um, was the, the we had a, a situation in the box we had two of our players around the ball where the one was uh, trying to clear it. And unfortunately, when he cleared it, he hit his hand and he was in the box. So obviously they got a penalty. They made it 2-1. And uh, then we, I think it was about 10 minutes, 15 minutes left, but we made sure that we defended well. We were solid at the back and uh, made sure that we didn't give anything away and to make sure that we come home with the three points. Yes, coach. Uh, this is your first official claim in the Glad Africa Championship. And I mean, I must say that congratulations for, for taking this one. Of course, you must uh, have analyzed and assessed your squad now in your first official game. And you sort of have an idea now of where you are in terms of your progress, especially with the preparations. Now having you go through your substitutions, looking at the, at the game, any particular yeah. substitutions that you had to... to, to... Um, the, 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 the first substitution that we made was um, one of the players... Um, 
uh, Lutando Mateza. He's one of the unders that was in the team. And obviously, you know, the under rule, we have to start with two unders, but I started with three unders in this game. Um, also because, like I explained to the players, if you're good enough, you're going to play. So if if the unders are showing me better than the overs, then then I will take that risk and play them. And also, the only the reason for that also was because I had about three or four players that uh, the registration cards wasn't ready. So they weren't available for the game today, but they will be for the weekend. So I had to take that initiative and to make that decision. And um, uh, Lutando was... Uh, I had a, a struggle with something under his arm and at halftime and then I realized and I said I'll give him another five minutes to see and I got the, the Torik Dean to to prepare to come on for him. So the, the, the change was not really a forced change but it was obviously because of an, an, an injury. And um, so then the second two changes was obviously because I could see that the two players that was running out of energy because, you know, the tempo of the game was high constantly. So, obviously, you know, some of the younger players, they, they tend to run out of energy and um, get tired. And also, it's understandable because it's our first official game. Um, and, I mean, I think I was trying to get everybody on, on at least 90 minutes match, match fitness, like, uh, during the, the, the preparations. Um, so yeah, so the two other changes was then um, uh, two attacking players uh, that uh, was replaced. And um, at the end, uh, it was, I think, also close to the 15, 10 minutes to go, was also fatigue like that kicked in. So, but I think that is the good thing also helping us with the five substitutions that we can do now during this period. And also because our games will be back to back and we need to finish the league in six months. So that's why I also try to get, to try to see if the boss will allow me to get uh, a, a bigger squad than what I initially was supposed to have. So that could also help me like now with uh, with trying to be able to rotate players also like and give them a rest. And But I mean, from what I can see that the uh, preparations went well and uh, the, the quality of the squad that I have, it's it's players that uh, when, when they're replaced, the next person that comes in will do almost a similar job as the previous one. So that is the, the, the best thing for me at the moment. Wow. Good to hear that, coach, that you you believe in the youth. And uh, that's something that we look forward to see more in some of the clubs in the Glad Africa Championship, that we're not only going for numbers. Now, having uh, gone down your first game, coach, are you pleased with the squad? Are you pleased with the players? And um, you think that uh, you've got what it takes within you um, and, and the football and the players as well? Um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, and you know, the 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 uh, the, the, the plus side from for me was that, and it's not always like that. Where I get to, I get the 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 the, the right to to choose my own players, like you know, because normally you have some teams, some bosses that you know they will say, I need, I want you to keep this player, that player, X, Y, Z, but I was given that authority to to select my own team. And that made it also easier for me because now I can choose exactly what I want and what I'm looking for. And I think for with the squad that I selected, like I, I don't have any doubts like in, in any of the players that I've selected. That's why, like I mentioned to you, like now with me being able to start with three unders and the one player that I actually started was um, one of Ubuntu's players that uh, was sent to me. And they were, I was told that, you know, it's a good player. I must have a look at him. When I saw him the first couple of weeks, I was happy with him. And um, I mean, it, fortunately enough for him, it came to where he actually started, he made his debut in the NFD and started in the game and played the whole 90 minutes. And I mean, he was his performance was incredible. And it's not something that I I knew that he's a good player, but for the performance today that I, that I saw from him, it was just took me to another level like now to say that, you know, um, giving a, a kid this opportunity that has never played at this level and being thrown into the deep end. And he held his own, you know, and uh, he had a very good performance. So uh, that's like, like you said, like now with the youngsters, we need to obviously uh, give our youngsters a chance and um, give them that, that opportunity on this platform because if we're not going to do it, who else is going to do it, you know? And uh, that, that is what the players actually gave me. They give me this confidence that I can say like, no, I can let you play because you're going to do the job for me. And that is also, I think, uh, based on my relationship with the players. 
because I try to be, not try to be, my motto is that, you know, honesty and truthfulness and those kind of things. And I install that in the players and they can see that from me also. So it's not just something that I'm telling them, they see it in my actions as well. And I mean, my, I had a chat with only the unders um, a couple of weeks ago and I explained to them that you're not here to make, to fill up the numbers because I have to have five in my squad every match day and I need to start with two. And I explained to them that, uh, you know, if it comes that I'm, there's no rule that says that I can start with five. The rule says I have to have two and I have to finish with two when I start with two. But it doesn't say that I cannot start with five. So I explained to them, I said to them, if you're going to show me that you're good enough and you're better than the, the, the experienced players that I have, you're going to play. And I mean, on the first day, I proved it to them to show them that I'm willing to start with even more unders in the team. And at the end of the day, we, came, we still came out with a, with, a, with a positive result. So that's the trust also that I'm, that I'm putting into the guys and showing to them that I believe in them. And also because they're giving me that uh, uh, way of thinking about them because of the, the work ethic, the way they work and training, um, the instructions that they get, they follow everything. And, you know, obviously here and there, they, they will make mistakes. But I mean, that's normal. I always tell them in the beginning of the game, we're all human. I will make a mistake also one day. And that is normal. So I won't try to minimize your mistakes when you do make mistakes. So we're all human at the end of the day. So I think with the concept and with the way I'm doing things, like all the players are buying into it and they actually kind of believe in it now and they trust in it. So that is what makes the difference for me. Absolutely, coach. And uh, we wish you everything of the best. Before I let you go, I have to kind of ask you this question because you spoke about the depth of the squad that you have to have in, in going through the next six months, which is going to be a very hectic time, including the yeah. Netland Cup. Um, yes. is there, are there any plans within the club to have, um, call it a development squad or a development team that may be com compete in the, in the, in the SAB League, where it will give you more leverage for you to to be able to have uh, depth in your, in, in, your, in your team? Well, I had a, a discussion with one of the um, guys that runs the LFA uh, team in, uh, from Steenburg, and um, they requested to have a meeting with me um, when I just got appointed the, the, the job. And I met with them, and I, my discussion with them was like uh, that, uh, we would like to have, you know, when you when you have the the professional setup linked up with the with the with the local LFA team to have that relationship because now we can we can they can use us coaches to coach their coaches to try and improve their their, their players and uh, but obviously that is a is a working process and um, you know they, there's not always that relationship between in this level like now with with the with the professional team with the amateur team and that is also what we're trying to do because we said. We need to also speak to the boss first to see if he if he if he understands what the concept that we're trying to to put in, uh, because you know it's it's difficult. Um, every every uh, chairman of a club has different philosophies and different ways of doing things. So we're trying to make him understand and for him to buy into the concept where we're trying to create this development structure where we don't have to go outside to go and look for players in the future. We have our own players that's coming through the youth structure and automatically getting that opportunity or, or being able to give that opportunity to be a part of the, the professional team. And uh, obviously we've had a discussion and um, hopefully in the near future we can, um, we, can, we can make progress with that. Because obviously like now it's a little bit difficult because there's no, no amateur football uh, taking place at the moment. So, uh, but that is definitely one thing that we're looking at. Uh, we're trying to change the image of the club also and trying to to make it a commu uh, community -based, based and also for the youngsters and those kind of things and also for them to benefit at the end of the day um, and grow and be able to say like, okay, there is a structure. Uh, if I stay in the structure, I could possibly make it to, 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 the, to the top team, uh, which is like obviously maybe like now the NFT team that we are busy with like now. Uh, but yeah, like I said, definitely that is something in the working process. Good news, coach, to hear that. As we end off, uh, your, as a, a quite an experienced uh, former football player yourself, having played in a lot of Cape Town derbies, uh, you're coming up against uh, Cape uh, United um, or Cape Umoya um, yeah. in the next couple of days. 
Uh, yeah, well, firstly, before I even get there, you know, before this game, I just wanted to get this first game out of the way because, you know, it was like nervousness, excitement, like all at the same time, like, you know, and um, I'm glad that this first game is out of the way. So, you know, and we got the, a big positive result. So now, you know, it makes things a little bit easier for us going forward into the into this derby, like which is a good preparation for us for, for this weekend. Um, so I, you know, now also for the players, for the confidence in going in, like, and also, like I said, like there was a couple of players, main players that uh, that was in my plans that wasn't registered uh, this week, which will be available on the weekend. So that gives me even a little bit more strength uh, for my team. And uh, hoping that the preparation for this week will go as smooth as, as last week went and uh, take it uh, um, in a positive way when we're going into this derby. Obviously, you know, derby is a big game. Uh, like you said, like now I've played in a lot of these games and, you know, it's, it's a lot of passion, all those kind of things. So I know what it's all about. So hopefully I can transfer this uh, information and uh, all the ideas like in that to the players. Uh, but like I said, like from how the players have, have responded to me uh, in the last couple of weeks, I have no doubt that, you know, for me pre preparing for the next week, for the weekend's game, uh, especially in the derby, that uh, will, will be as smooth as it was before. Because, uh, like I said, the players, I think, believe in what I'm trying to do. Um, they will be buy into the concept and uh, there's just the belief from their side. They need to believe also that, anything is possible. And that is what I'm trying to install into them all the time. Uh, I mean, I'm always, you know, sometimes I don't like to talk about myself, but I always use myself as an example. Um, I play clips for them, like from my playing days, just so for them to inspire also, like and those kind of things, because it's also possible for them, for, for a lot of them to to, to also go into to the, to the direction that I went in my career. And all those kind of things I'm trying to, to encourage them to try to get the best out of them. So hopefully this weekend we uh, will be ready and prepared for the for the first derby coming up. Everything of the best, coach. Thanks for making the time to chat with us. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye.